In this video, I just want to help you review for the final exam by going over some examples of Python code that review some of the concepts that we learned over the course. So first thing, let's create a function that's going to analyze the contents of a string. And we're going to have the function take in two arguments, a string and a special character. And we're going to have it return a list with four elements. The number of spaces is going to be the first element of the list. The number of vowels, A, E, I, O, or U is going to be the second thing in the list. The third thing in the list is going to be the number of characters that are not vowels or spaces. And the fourth element in the list is going to be the number of occurrences of the special character. And we're going to say that the special character could include things like vowels or space character. And knowing that should influence the way that we think about the, the logic of our function and how it's going to have to work. So, we can also assume that any letter, letter characters contained in the string are lowercase too, just to make things a bit easier for us. So let's make this function here. We'll call it letter analyzer. And we'll have it take in a string and a special character. And we have to keep a count of all these things. So that's telling us that we're probably going to want to have local variables to keep track of spaces, vowels, other characters, and special character occurrences. So we might want to set up these here. We could say like space is equal to zero, vowels is equal to zero, other is equal to zero, special is equal to zero. And then we have to count all the occurrences of these things in the string. So that's telling us really that we need a loop, that we're going to have to loop through this string one character at a time and look at each character to see what it is. So we can safely put in a loop and say like for C in input string, and C is going to be like our character that we're looking at one character at a time in this string. Now, if we want to work out this, the logic here for, for what we're doing inside this loop, we want to look at the, the problem description and the problem description is telling us that like, we need to count the number of spaces, number of vowels, and the number of other characters that are not spaces or vowels. So spaces obviously aren't vowels and you know, all the characters that are not vowels or spaces are going to be kind of another set entirely. Uh, but then we have this special character we've got to keep track of and the special character could be a vowel or it could be a space. So this is, if we, if we think about it, we can, put the, the first few things there together in an if else, if, if we wanted to, so we could say like, if it's a, if it's a space, you know, increment the space count, otherwise it's a vowel, increase the vowel count, otherwise increase the other count. And, and it's going to be helpful to do that because, you know, if we check if something isn't a space and if we check if something isn't a vowel, then we know that it's going to be something that's not a vowel or a space. So it makes logical sense to, to, to group the first three checks together. But then this fourth check for a special character, given that it could be a vowel or a space, that's that's probably gonna have to be some kind of logic on its own because it, we, we can't really by process of elimination determine that something is not a, a vowel or a space um, in, in that case, because it's just a different thing. It's a, it's a special character, it could be anything. So, so here's what I mean. Like if we said, if C is equal to a space, then we know it's a space and we can increment spaces. So we can say space is equal to spaces plus one. And then I could say else if, and we'll say, you know, C is equal to A or C is equal to E or C is equal to uh, I or C is equal to O or C is equal to U. You know, now we've determined that it's a vowel, so we can say vowels is equal to vowels plus one. I should probably put the plus one there, so that way it'll work. And then I'm gonna say here else. So here, here's what I mean when I say like we can kind of group the logic together for the first couple things there, because if something isn't a space and it's not a vowel, then we want to count it as some kind of other character. And by kind of structuring it like an if, else, if, else like this, at this point, we know that we don't have a space and we don't have a vowel. So it makes sense to structure as an if, else, uh, structure like this. If I, 
look at this next comparison though, where we have to check if, if the special character is is uh, occurring. It could be a vowel or a space. So I wouldn't want to try to stick that logic in here somewhere because, you know, if I check for a space, then I'd have to do like another check in here to see if the special character is a space as well or, or something like that. So so because this is like a, a different kind of check altogether where it could include these, these two groups here, I'm going to want to put this, you know, down here. And I know, you know, maybe if you're comfortable with thinking about programming, maybe this is kind of an obvious thing to you, but um, this is the kind of thing that uh, is, is tricky to think through if you're new to programming. So um, that's why I'm kind of going over like this. But, but here now we've got, you know, if the character is equal to the special character, increment the count of special. And now we can just return the counts. So return spaces, vowels, other, and special. And we can do like a little test of the program here. So let's do like letter, letter analyzer. And we'll say for a string, we'll say like ABC, DEF, dot XYZ. And we'll make a special character that we're going to check for X. And if we run this here, what do I get? I get a I get an error. Let's go back and fix it. Name O H E R is not defined. So that's telling me that I've made a mistake, right? And it's it's that I've spelled the thing wrong, I spelled the variable wrong. Let's try it again. Okay. 2081. So do I have two spaces? Yes, I've got a space there and a space there. Uh, what about vowels? Do I have it says that I've got zero. That's not right. And I can see why. I've got this missing E in there. So I've got another mistake there. I gotta fix that. So right now I'm debugging. This is normal to do. So I'll run this here. Uh, vowels now it says two. So I've got A, I've got E, that makes sense. Other characters would be things that are not spaces or vowels. So one, oh, sorry, no, that's a vowel. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. So that makes sense that it's eight. And the special characters are X and I've only got one X. So this looks like it's working now. So next up, let's try to write a loop that's going to continuously test this function. So we're going to try to continuously test this function by just asking the user to enter in a string to analyze and a special character. And we're going to keep calling the above function with the input that we get from the user and just keep on reporting the results to the user. And we're going to give the user a chance to quit by entering in quit or any other text to keep going. So to do this, because we want the, the loop to just sort of continuously ask the user for um, input, we could use a infinite while loop where we say like while true. And this will just keep on going forever and ever. This is one way of doing this. So we can say like while true, and this will keep going forever and ever until we say break. Break will break us out of this loop and it'll stop the loop. And we could do the break when the user enters quit. So we're gonna use this kind of logic for this loop. Like a lot of things in programming though, this isn't the only way we could have done this. We could have set a variable to true. And we could have said something like this. We could have said like, uh, uh, stop is equal to, or we could have said, we could, have called, we could have called it like keep going or something like that. So we could have said keep going is equal to true. And then we could have said keep going here. And then we could have set at some point, keep going equal to false when we no longer want to use the loop. So there's the, with programming, there's all kinds of ways to solve problems, right? There's no, there's never like one way, but all right, so let's try this. We're just going to keep asking the user for input. So we're going to say the input string is equal to input and we'll ask the user to enter a string to analyze. Then we're going to say special care is equal to input. And we're going to say enter a special character. Um, we're going to call the function. So we're going to call the letter, letter analyzer function with the string and the special character. Uh, then we'll print out the results. So we'll print out like how many spaces and everything else. So we'll say spaces. That would be the first element in the list. And then we'll print out the other thing. So we'll say spaces and we'll say vowels. And we'll say other. And we'll say special. And then we'll do one, two, three. So that'll, that'll ask the user and then print out the results. And then we want to give the user the option to quit. So we're gonna have to say like, do you want to quit or not? So we'll say like, 
you know, enter quit to quit or any other text to continue. Okay. And then we'll say if, this is where we can use the break, we'll say if the quit option is equal to quit, then we want to break. So now we've got a loop that's going to keep asking the user for a string, a special character. It's going to run the function. We'll get the results. Then the user can optionally quit. So let's try this. We'll say enter string to analyze. We'll say this is my string. Enter a special character. Maybe we'll say S. And we've got spaces three. That makes sense. We've got one, two, three. Vowels three. We've got I, I, I. So that makes sense. Other 12, that seems about right. Uh, we could check it, but it seems about right. Special character is three, so we got S, S, S. So it's looking pretty good. Um, if we wanted to keep going, we could say just enter some text here, whatever it is. Now it's gonna say enter a string to analyze. We'll say A, B, C, space, D, E, F. Special character, we'll say D. Um, and now we've got here space is one. Yep, there's one space, two vowels. Um, We've got E, we have A, um, other four. So we have B, C, D, F, and special. We had D, we had one character, so that seems good. So we'll quit, and now we're good. Um, so that's just an example of you know creating a function to analyze a string. Um, so we'll do one more function now. We'll do one more example function here. So let's create a function that's going to check to see if a distance is exceeded given speed and time values. So the function is going to take in a two lists. It's going to take in a list of speeds and a list of times. The units actually don't really matter that much for the purposes of our calculation, but we could say it's meters a second for speed and you know second for the time. And we're going to also take in as an argument a required distance. And what we're going to do is we're going to compute and print the distance for every speed and time combination. So for every speed and time combination, we're going to determine and compute and print how much distance would be covered if we went at that speed for that time. Then we're going to have the function return a list of all the speed and time tuples where that speed and time combination is going to exceed the required distance that we're given as an argument. So we're going to have a function that looks like this. We're going to say like definition or def, we're going to say distance checker. It's going to take in a list of speed speeds, a list of times, and a distance required. And we're going to call it with things like this. So we're going to call it maybe like one, two, three, you know, one, two, three, and distance required would be eight. And we're basically checking for every combination of speed and distance, does it exceed the distance required? And if it does, we're going to return those in a list. We're also going to print out every speed and time combination in terms of uh, the speed and time and the distance covered by that speed and time combination. So because we're trying to do every combination of speed and time, and we have these two lists here, if you're trying to figure out like, because you know this is an exam review here, right? If you're trying to figure out how to program that, that's something that can tip you off that we're probably going to need a loop inside a loop because we're trying to do every combination of speed with 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 every possible time here and that should kind of tip you off that it seems like we're going to need a nested loop it seems like we're going to have to do something for every one of these and then something for every one of these inside of it um, so that's just a, that's just sort of like a, a way of sort of thinking about the problem there and you know we're going to try to keep track of this list of um, speed and time combinations where we exceed the distance required. And so we're going to have to keep track of that. So that, that kind of tells us we're probably going to need a local variable that's going to be a list where we're going to append and keep track of the, the, the speeds and times for which the, the distance required was exceeded. So we'll say like these are the acceptable speed and times. And then we'll do our nested loop. So we'll say for speed in speeds, for time in times, we'll compute the distance covered. So we'll compute the, the distance covered for that speed and that time. So we'll say speed times time. Then we're gonna say, let's print out the distance. 
and we'll print out the distance covered. And then we'll print out the speed and time as well. So we can say like uh, speed, maybe we'll put it in bracket here, speed colon speed time colon time. And then if the distance covered is greater than the distance required, that's something we want to return. So if the distance covered by this speed and time is greater than the distance required, then we're going to append this speed and time tuple to this list here. Now, if you remember, if you remember tuples in Python, they worked like this. You'd say like speed, time, and then these two things are together in a tuple and they're being appended to this list here. So then that's really that. And then we can just return the acceptable times. And then if I were to run this here, uh, first I get an error. So let's fix that. Oh, time, oh, I've got to put an extra comma there. Okay. So this looks like it's working already because we have this, uh, you know, we're getting every combination here. So we've got like speed one, speed two, speed three, time one, two, three, time one, two, three, time one, two, three. So we're doing every combination of speed and time. And it looks like these distance calculations make sense, right? Because I feel like for, um, you know, speed of two and time of three, you know, we'd cover six meters distance. Um, and, and we've got a distance required of eight. And the only thing we're returning here is three, three, when the speed is three and the time is three. So that makes sense because we'd get nine in that case. And that would be a case where the, you know, distance covered exceeds the distance required. If we change this to something like five, now I've got a few combinations. I've got uh, this one here where the speed is two and the time is three. And I've got this one here where the speed is three and the time is two. And those are in there as well because, you know, the distance of six is exceeding the distance required of five. So this is just another example of a, of a Python function here. And just to, just to kind of go over some, some concepts you learned earlier in the course. So I'm going to make another review video just going over some objects and, and classes next. So uh, I'll see you in that one next, hopefully.